Hello and welcome to another tutorial from Moi ICT. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a, a Space Invaders style game inside of WPF and C Sharp. Let's just take a look at the demo. So we have the enemies being spawned on the top of the screen and they're moving towards the right. So when they move to past the right uh, side of the screen, they will come down a little bit and then you can see the bullets being spawned. So if I get hit by one of the bullets, uh, the game is over and it shows a little message to say you got killed by the bullet press enter to play again you can press enter and then the game will start again so I'm able to press the space bar to shoot at the enemies and then when I killed about five or six enemies it speeds up and then as I shoot the last enemy it tells me that uh, the invaders left uh, only one the last one that killed and then see you win I can press enter to play the game again so uh, this game is going to be made from um, stock version of the WPF and C Sharp. We're not going to be using any of the libraries. Uh, so let's just get started on this project. Go so and make a new project in Visual Studio. In this window, click on create a new project. Uh, so for the project list, uh, make sure you choose the WPF app.net framework. Click next. Let's name this project Space Invaders. More ICT. Okay, so I click create. So this is the default view of the project that we're going to be working on. Uh, first thing, we need to download the images from the Moo ICT website. That's in the link in the description. So make sure you download them and extract them. Okay, so that way we can actually import them into the project. So let's do that now. So inside the Solutions Explorer, right click on the name of the project. Click on add. Let's add a new folder for images. Right click on the folder and click on add click on existing item so from here you can navigate to the downloads and uh, once you have them extracted you'll be able to see them here so just if you can't see them just choose the images image files from the drop down menu here and then you should be able to find all the images right here so these are the images that we're going to be using for this game okay. select all of them click add and they'll be added to the project here Okay. So this part is for the XAML code. Uh, we're going to be making a few changes for this one before we move on to the c -sharp programming. Change the title to Space Invaders Game More ICT. Uh, change the height to 500. So we want it to be a little bit bigger. I'm just going to zoom out of here a little bit so I can see better. Yeah, so we have a grid currently. We're going to change that to a canvas. Okay, let's give this canvas a name. Set focusable to true because this is the only element in the in the app that we want to focus on when the game runs. Okay, let's uh, set the background to black. Okay. Then here we can say key down key is down now set the key up the key is up okay. these are the events that we're going to be adding later on as we move along with the programming okay. so inside of here first thing we need is a label so name and then it's left set the foreground to white so we can see the text Set the font size 16. Font weight to extra bold. Okay. And if we end the tag inside of the middle here, we are able to add the content that we want. So in here, we can say enemies left. Let's put it down at zero for now. So you'll be able to see the text that gets added right at the top there. So that's the perfect spot for the text. Now let's add a rectangle for the player. Let's name this one player. Then let's do white for now. Let's set the height for this one to 65 and width to 55. That's the height and width of the image. So we're able to show the image uh, directly inside the canvas. Okay, so if we end the tag now, uh, you'll see a rectangle that gets added there. So we're just going to move the rectangle to the bottom row right here. So this is where the player is going to be moving left and right on the screen. 
that's all we need for the XAML code. Uh, now we just need to add both of these events to the C sharp. Uh, that's pretty easy. So if you just right click on the keys down keyword here, and then we're going to go to click on go to image definition, and that gets added to the C sharp script. Uh, do the same for the keys up, go to definition, that gets added here as well. Okay, we're going to need a couple of custom functions to make this game work. So let's go make those. So the first one is going to be private void. Say enemy bullet maker inside of here we're going to be accepting a double for the x and y position of where the bullet's going to be positioned when it's created now let's make a private void make enemies instead of this function we're going to set a int to limit so this is going to limit how many enemies we actually create for this game the last function we're going to need is to show the game over screen. So we'll say void show game over. So instead of here, we can set a string for a message. Okay, so we can pass it a message and then we can show the message on the screen. So with this um, event set up, now we can go and add the namespace that we need for the timer. So we're going to just say using system dot windows dot threading. Okay, so now we should have access to the dispatcher timer that we're going to need in order to control the animation for the enemies and for the player. So right at the top here, let's start adding the variables. First one is going to be uh, two booleans to move left and right. So say go left, and then go right. Okay, then we're going to need a list of rectangles call items to remove now we're going to be using this um, list to add items that we don't need in the screen and then remove them from the canvas let's make an int for enemy images one for the bullet timer and bullet timer limit portal enemies and the speed let's set the default to six and we're also going to need a boolean for game over Let's set that to false for now. Okay. Uh, we're going to need a dispatcher timer. Let's call this one game timer. Set the new dispatcher timer here. We do image brush for the player. Actually for now well, let's set the bullet timer limit to 90. So it's going to be the frequency of how often we shoot at the player. Okay, so now let's set up the game timer. So inside the main window constructor here, this is the first uh, constructor to run when the program actually loads. So we can set up the timer right inside of this one. So let's say game timer dot tick plus equals to let's call the game loop. interval equals to time span of from milliseconds so we want this one to tick every 20 milliseconds it's very fast let's also start the timer here as well uh, set up the player skin uh, so say player skin the image source equals Uh, we can set it to a new bitmap image inside of here we can say new uri so we need to navigate to where the image is saved so inside of here we can say pack application we have three commas here then we have access to the images folder right there and then we can go and say player.png okay so that should um, load up the image for the player skin now we need to apply it to the player so player.fill equals player skin 
Okay, so now if we highlight over for the game loop, this is got the red line under it. So we can just go to save show potential fixes and then just select the first one. And that's going to add the event for the timer. We don't need this line here. We can delete that from there. So now pretty much we've got all the functions and events that we need for this game. Uh, let's start with the key is down and then we'll work our way up. So inside the key is down, we say if key dot key is equals equals key dot left dot left control go left equals to true. Say the same here for e the key dot right set go right to true. We could just copy and paste this inside of the key is up function and set them to false spelling. Right, so when the keys are pressed, it's going to set the booleans to true. When the keys are released, it's going to set the booleans back to false. Okay, so let's add the movement logic inside of the game loop. So this way we can see how the player actually moves inside the boundaries of the canvas. Okay, let's say if left is equals equals true. What we need to say is and get left of the player so we need to get the left position of the player character and say if it's still greater than zero so if it's on the edge as long as it's on the edge of the left side of the screen we want to still continue to move it towards the left if it's on the edge we don't want to move it anywhere further out okay, so now let's say canvas dot set left so player And just to get left again yeah now we can set it to a speed so for now we can just set it to like say a 10 yeah okay let's do the similar thing to go right so go right to because it goes true and we want canvas to get right oh get left sorry get left player so we also need to give you a width. So we want to give you a little bit of padding. So we're going to give it 80 and say if that is still less than right location dot current the main window dot width. So if it's still inside the width of the application, we want to move it towards the right. So set left again. Set that to player. This one is a canvas dot get right get left keep going very right player say this time plus 10 okay so with that done we can actually test out to see if the player is moving left or right uh, we do need to do one more thing in order to make sure the canvas stays in focus so you can say my canvas dot focus okay so now we are good to try it so right now you can see the player character has been changed to the image if I press the left key, I'm able to move it all the way to the left. And if I press the right key, I'm okay to move it all the way to the right. So it stops the boundaries here. That's what we want. So uh, One other thing the player is going to be able to do is when we press the space bar, we should be able to fire a bullet towards the top of the screen. So instead of the key up function, so we don't want uh, the player to spam the key down. So as long as you can hold it down, it's going to continuously shoot a bullet. So when the space bar is released, we want to shoot a bullet then. So let's say if we do key equals equals key dot space, right? If that is true, then we're going to be making a new rectangle for the bullet. So say rectangle here. Let's call this one new bullet. Okay, so inside the rectangle tag here, we are able to give the properties right inside the tag. So just make sure you do a semicolon end of it. First thing is going to be the tag. So we'll say tag equals to bullet. So we're going to identify the bullet using the tag. Let's set the height to 20. Set the width to 5. Let's set the fill to white and then we want also want to give you a little outline so we're going to say stroke equals 
Brochures don't rent. Okay, because it's the last one, we don't need to put a comma. Yeah. Okay, so outside of this part, we're gonna to need to give it a left the top position. So you can say canvas dot set top of the bullet. Okay, let's call the new bullet here. We're gonna get the canvas to get top of the player. But that's where we want to move the bullet and then we say minus new bullet of height so it's going to be on top of the player character canvas so still set left new bullet to canvas so get left of the player plus player dot width times by two so it's going to be placed right in the middle of where the player is. Okay, and then we can say my canvas the children dot add. We can add the new bullet to the screen. Okay, so with that being done, we should be able to test out whether the bullet gets added to the screen. Okay, so if I press space now, as you can see, there's a bullet gets added. So if I release the space bar. I'm adding lots and lots of bullets. Nice. And as you can see, it's got the white fill and then a red outline around it. Looks pretty nice. Okay, so with the player bullet being done now, uh, let's go and make the enemy bullet here. Let's fill in the function for this one. Inside of this, we're going to do something similar to the one that we did here. Okay, so we're going to make a new rectangle. Let's call this one enemy bullet. Yep. So instead of there, we're going to give it a tag. Enemy bullet. Let's set a height to say 40. Set the width to 15. Let's give the fill to brushes to yellow and then we also have to give a stroke say brushes to black and also give a stroke thickness to five so it's uh, let's set up the left and top for the enemy bullet so say set top to enemy bullet to the y position so because the y position is going to be directly passed through from the function so we can just place it whatever value that's passed in here okay and then say canvas oh. set left new bullet to x okay, and lastly we're going to say my canvas dot add children sorry children dot add and then in here we can say a little bullet. Okay, so that gets added up here. Okay, so the way that we're going to be spawning the enemy bullet is by using the bullet timer limit inside of the games loop. So inside the games loop here, let's go and add that logic. So say bullet timer is say minus equals three. So it's going to reduce three from the bullet timer with each tick. If bullet timer is say less than zero that's when we're going to be making the enemy bullet so we run the enemy bullet timer here now we need to give the position of the player and a position for the top okay because we are taking in two different values here for the x and for the y okay, so let's go and say and let's don't get left just a player, right? So we don't want it to be positioned uh, where the player is. We also want to move it towards, say, about 20 pixels towards the right. And then let's set, set that to 10. And right after it's done that, then we need to reset the bullet timer. So bullet timer equals bullet timer limit. Okay, so it's going to go set back to 90 and then it's going to reduce it again. Okay, so if we go try that now, because the first it starts with a zero, so as you can see on the top there, it adds a bullet for the enemy, and then when I move the player again to here, move it there, 
adds one as it reduces it down. So this way the player cannot stay stationary. They have to move around because there would be a bullet coming down from the top. Okay, so now let's go to the make enemies function. So the first thing we're going to need inside of this function is we're going to need a int called left. Let's set this one to zero for now. Okay, and we're going to be running a loop to figure out how many enemies we need to create. So we get a for loop. So if I just press tab twice, it fills in the rest for me. Okay, so i is equal to zero, that's fine. We need to change the length to the limit. And if it is less than the limit, then i plus plus, that's perfectly fine. So instead of here, first thing we need to do is we're going to create an image brush. Okay, call this one enemy skin, because new image brush. We're going to create one for each enemy that it creates. Okay, so this one is going to be responsible for adding the invader images that we imported earlier to the invaders that we're going to be creating in this game. So let's go and make a rectangle called new enemy. Okay, and then we'll do the oh, we'll allow drop. Okay, so here we can say give me a tag called enemy. Set the height to 45. Set the width to 45. And set the fill to enemy skin. Okay, so that's going to attach it to that image that we're going to link inside of this one. Because it's going to be done inside a loop and there's so many of them going to be created, we want to be able to control how the uh, images get set. But before we do that, we just set the um, top and the left position of the enemy that's created now. Let's do the canvas to set top here. Say set top. New enemy. We're going to set the default location to 10. So that's where they're going to be spawning when the game starts. Then we say canvas dot set left your enemy to the position that we're gonna set with the left integer we created earlier here. Okay. So so far the left is gonna be zero, so that's where the first one is going to spawn. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna add this one first. Children to add. enemy and then once that is added then we're going to be reducing minus 60 from that so it's going to be minus 60 and then minus 120 and then so on and so forth Let's make some space and say enemy images so we're going to say plus plus here so we're going to add one to the enemy images and then we're also going to say if enemy images is say greater than eight so we only have eight images all together we're going to set enemy images back to 1. So if it goes over 8, we just come back to the first image. Okay, we need to do a switch statement here. Okay, and look for enemy images. I'm going to need these two. So case 1. Let's do a break here as well. Then we go to enemy skin. Image source equals new bitmap image. Say new URI. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing again. It's going to copy that player's part from there. Bring that inside of this. Okay, so instead of a player, we're going to need to reference invader1.gif. Okay. So because the player is a PNG image, but the invaders are the GIF images. So they're all transparent, but they are GIF images. Okay. There's a yellow one, there's a pink, green. Okay, so with that done, I'm going to copy and paste this one. Now I just need to change them. So this one is two. 
times three. So it's four. So it's five. So it's six. Seven. And this one is eight. So just to see how this actually works for us, um, if I just set the left here to say about 800, so it's gonna just reduce 60 from that. So I'm gonna set it back to uh, zero in a minute, um, just to show how this actually works. So go back to the constructor again, okay, under the focus, say, make enemies. Okay, so let's just go and make like 10 enemies now. Okay, so with the make enemies line added here, let's go and start to run the app and see how that works. So as you can see, the enemy has been added to the screen now. So the enemies we can see on the top, it's kind of went through the switch statements and added the different images for the enemies there as well. And that's one of the bullets that got it for the player. Okay, so that's working fine. Let's go and make, set that back to zero. So that way enemies get placed properly onto the screen. Inside the game loop, we need to run a for each loop inside to identify the rectangles that we have created for the enemy, the player bullets and the enemy bullets. Okay, so instead of here, let's go and run a for each loop. So the for each loop is going to be looking for, let's say a variable called X. Okay, and it's gonna be inside of my canvas, dot children dot off type. So we're only interested in the rectangles. Do the syntaxes like that. So, so the first one is going to be the player bullet. So I'm going to say if x is rectangle, and let's do a string here. X dot tag string is equals to bullet. All right. So if the um, if we find a rectangle with a tag called bullet, then we can do the following. So this if statement is going to apply only to the player bullet. I'll say it's canvas dot set top get okay, to x and then we're gonna say canvas dot get top x and then we're gonna reduce it by minus twenty so it's gonna move up quite fast. Okay, so if we were to go ahead and try that, we can see it in action. So right now if I press space so as you can see that I'm able to shoot shoot up quite a bit okay so there is a slight problem right now because all these objects that are being created none of them is being destroyed once they left the screen so right now we have a lot of unused resources that's being created by this app but it's not being fully managed so we actually need to find a way to remove them once we don't need them anymore. So this is where the items uh, remover list comes in handy. Okay, so what we can say here is if, uh, let's say canvas dot get top, x is say less than 10. Right, so it's reached the top of the screen, then you can just add it to items to remove. Okay, we haven't told what to do with the items to remove yet. We can add it to there. So let's say items to remove, dot add, and then add the X to it. So that is only once it reached the top of the screen. Okay, we're also going to need to create a um, rect. Uh, with the rect class, what we're able to do is be able to confine the rectangle inside of it and tell what it is, and then we can test out hit test between the bullet and the enemy. Okay, so let's say rect. Hold bullet equals new rect okay. this one's going to take four arguments so we can say get top so we get left first so we'll get left x get top x so the left and so basically the x and y value of the bullet so we'll say x go width and then x 
extra height. We'll have to do the same thing for the enemy and for the enemy bullet as well. Actually, while we remember it, let's do it for the player as well here. Select the player hitbox equals erect. Player. Then we can say player door width and then player door height. Okay, so that's going to be the hitbox where we can check whether the player got hit by the enemy bullet or by the enemy. Okay, so now let's animate the enemies. So we'll say if x is rectangle and We're identifying the enemy inside of this if statement. And let's do set left x. And then say canvas do get left x again. And this time we're going to add it to enemy speed. Okay. So it's basically going to be moving it towards the right of the screen. Okay. If I just try this now, as you can see, that all the enemies are moving towards the right of the screen. But what we want to do is once they reach the end of the screen, we want to move it back to here, and then they should be moving down a little bit as well. So I say if canvas dot get left x is greater than eight hundred and twenty, then we can say canvas dot set left x to say minus 80 so it's off screen on the left and canvas the set top to say x and canvas the get top so let's get the top position of the x plus say x dot height plus 10 to just give it a little bit more padding so if we try this now, as the enemies move to the end of the screen, we should come back here and then continue to move. Okay. I'm not going to shoot the enemies just yet. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, so with that being done, and I'm going to also make a rect for the enemy. Just probably copy that. Gonna be the same again. Okay, because it's inside the if statement where we are identifying the enemy, this x is going to only apply to the ones that has a string um, tag called enemy, and this x is gonna apply only to the tag that's called bullet. So now let's do one for the enemy bullet. So say if I can just probably copy and paste that if here. Instead of enemy, this time it's going to be enemy bullet. Okay, so I say canvas dot set top of this x and then get top of the x, and this time we're going to plus it to say about 10. So this way, it's a little bit slower than the player's bullet, so it gives you time to move out of the way. Okay, we also want to add it, so the same way that we did the player bullet, we can copy that if statement to here. And say if it's greater than this time, if it's greater than about 480, so where the player is, right? And then if it is, then we're just going to add it to the items to remove right now. So at the moment, uh, if we go back, then we should be able to see the enemy bullets coming down towards the player. So if I move over here, it gets spawned there, and then it comes down towards the player. Okay. Let's go. We're kind of getting everything pretty much sorted out. We're also going to need another rect here for the enemy bullet. Okay, so let's go create one here. It's going to be there. Let's call it enemy bullet hitbox. 
so it's gonna contain all the information about the enemy bullet and so right now we're adding quite a lot of stuff to the items to remove list here but we actually need to remove it from the canvas instead of this one we're going to need to run another for each loop here to say we're going to be looking for rectangle instead of anything else so let's just say rectangle let's call it i okay inside of items to remove it is only containing all rectangles any rectangle that is added to this list we can remove it from the canvas so say my canvas dot children dot remove and then let's just pass in the value i here okay to see this one in action so if i run this app now okay so as you can see when i when the enemy bullet goes past right so it goes past to the 480 mark here and then as soon as it goes past there it doesn't go past anymore right and also you can see the player bullet it's as soon as it hits the top there it's been removed right now okay so this is one of the efficient ways to actually create and dynamically remove items without um, sort of hogging up the memories okay, the invaders are actually moving down quite nicely as well so we need to find a way to interact with the player one of the reasons that we created the player hitbox above all the other if statement and the for each loop is so we can actually access it inside of them yeah so what we'll do first is we'll do the enemy box here so right under this one we can say if player hitbox dot intersect with enemy hitbox right and then we can say show game over we need to pass in a message right, so you were killed by the invaders okay so yeah okay that's going to be the last function that runs uh, once the game is over we haven't set that part just yet okay so we can leave that one there and then we can also say the same for the enemy bullet okay so this one's going to be enemy bullet hitbox so let me write the invader bullet so this way we know which kind of ended the game for us okay so one of the problems is since the bullet and the enemy both are being created dynamically inside of the c sharp script so we don't have a object reference to uh, what we will need to do we need to run another for each loop inside the for each loop to identify the enemy separately and then to try and interact the bullet and the enemy from there okay so inside under this line here where we have created a rect for the bullet let's make some space so we are still inside the if statement for the bullet right now okay and let's create another for each loop here i'll we'll say var this time we're going to say y so not to say x because we'll be using x there and then say my canvas dot children dot off type again we want the rectangle okay, instead of this for each loop we need to identify the enemy first so say if y is rectangle and I say string y dot tag equals equals enemy right we're gonna to need to create a new rect for this one first so let's just copy and paste this one change that to say enemy hit okay, we need to change them from x to y so it correlates with the new for each loop that we've created here So with that done, now what we can check is with we can check with this one uh, if it hits with this one here. Okay, so say if bullet dot intersect with enemy hit. Okay, so if this object inter intersect with this object, in that case, what we're going to do is we're going to say item to remove. 
right we remove the x so we remove the bullet so we're going to do the add let's just duplicate that line say y so we're going to remove the bullet remove the enemy and then we also need to remove one from the total enemies list okay so total enemy is going to be reduced by one i think right now the total enemy is not being set just yet so to set that up so we can actually see the enemies being reduced okay so if we go back to the make enemies function right here so say here is total enemies equals a limit okay so whatever limit that we set that's the total enemies that we have right okay, so inside the timer function right the top that the player let me say enemies left dot content equals enemies left plus total enemies so we can see the number being updated on the screen uh, on the label okay and that's going to be changing once the bullet right, hits the enemy i'm just going to try that out see if that works okay so we have that so if i send a bullet up so as you can see you've got one enemy that's finished and been removed the bullet's been removed as well second enemy so they're being removed from the game okay, that's pretty cool so but one of the good things about having a function like that to say how many enemies we want on the screen so if i set that to like let's say 50 we'll be able to get quite a lot of enemies in okay and each of them will be rendered differently based on the switch statement And also set a um, time when we check so right now there's no more enemies left so the enemy left is set to zero so that's updating nicely let's set that to 30. we can actually check and make the game a bit more challenging okay that's pretty good so now let's change the enemy speed depending on how many enemies that we killed so say so if total enemies is less than so about 10 okay, so we can set the enemy speed now to double so right now it's at 6 and then we can set it to 12 so let's just go kill a few enemies there we go. so now it's speed up a little bit We also need to have a way to win this game. So if total enemies is less than one, show game over message to save the world. Okay, so let's do the game over function. So this way we can start to see the effects of it so right now we can say game set the game over boolean to true first okay and then we can say enemies left dot content plus equals let's do a space first and then we'll send them the message plus So whatever message gets passed in it's going to add it to the existing message that's already inside the content and then it's just going to add press enter to play again okay we also need to stop the game timer otherwise the game is going to continue to play okay, so with these three lines we should be able to stop the game and see some sort of effect so if i get killed by the bullet now you see it tells me you know, i can't really read that very much to read that properly and set the let me set the 
enemies, we can set them to say about 30. So it's below the label a little bit, so we can read the top. Okay, that's perfect. So if it's the enemies left, it's 30. You were killed by the invader bullet. Press enter to play again. Okay. And then obviously if you get hit by one of the invaders, um things slightly quicker. I'll set the enemy speed to like 16 for now, just to see if I can avoid the bullets long enough. So I got hit by the enemy, you were killed by the invaders, press enter to play again. So right now if we press enter, nothing happens. We will put the logic in just yet. So I can just set that back to six. Right. So inside the key op function, uh, let's go and add the logic that we need to reset the game. So say if dot key equals equals key dot enter. And we also need to make sure and game over is set to true. So say system dot diagnostics dot process dot start. Okay. Application dot resource assembly dot location. So we save that. And then we shut down the current application. And we shut down. Okay, so this one is going to restart the application, and then this is going to come, um, shut down the current application here. I think we all set. Okay, let's try that. So I'll get killed by the enemy bullet. Press enter, and then it closes it, and it opens another one for me here. Okay, move the mouse away. So now I'm able to move again, and play the game, see if I can kill as many as I can. So right now it says you win, you save the world, and then pre press enter to play again. Okay, and now I'm able to play the game again with the invaders popping up. Okay, so this has been the tutorial on how to make a Space Invaders game. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I will see you on the next one.